Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Tom. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small inches. Today's video is on this steel BR340 backpack blower. The guy that owns it brought it to me last week, said it stopped running. He couldn't get it to run anymore. He said it was running the week before, um, and I have actually worked on this before and consulting with my highly sophisticated database uh, back in 2015. I replaced the spark plug, replaced the air filter, and cleaned the spark arrester, and it was good to go at that point. So we're going to go through this today and see what's changed from then. And Oddly enough, this tank had about that much fuel in it when he brought it to me, and unfortunately, it has spewed all of its fuel all over my shop floor. i um, not exactly sure what that's about. Now, before I get too far along, I am going to take a look at this uh, spark arrester, see how that looks. Uh, it's a little clogged up, not nearly as bad as it um, was the last time around. I can clean that up later on, put that back for now. All right, let's check inside the fuel tank. Ooh, it's a lot of, a lot of pressure there. Maybe, might not be venting well. Now the fuel filter... I don't know, it doesn't look too bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. We'll check all that. So we're going to take a look at the spark plug, and we're going to check for compression. The last time I worked on this in 2015, it had 150 PSI. I made note of that. And the spark plug, as you can see, is kind of wet. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's been sort of running a little on the rich side, but, you know, nothing that seems really bad at this point. Standard compression tester. I'm going to screw that in the plug hole. Zero out our gauge and see what we come up with here. I've locked the throttle wide open uh, to do this compression test. And let's see what she comes up with here. just right at 120 so it has lost 30 pounds of pressure in the eight years since I've seen this thing now we're going to check the intake see what's going on there uh, this is a t27 wow this air filter is completely, it is just dripping with fuel. I'm not sure what that's all about. It is completely swollen up. There's all this fuel laying in the bottom. It's been so much fuel, the air filter won't even really fit in there anymore. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, with all this um, fuel leaking out of it, um, fuel spilling everywhere, Put the spark plug back in and treat it like it's flooded. Add some more fuel. That's about how much was in here when he brought it to me. All right, let's pretend like this thing is flooded. Whoa, signs of life. Well, that's a good sign. Shut the 
this off and see if it'll start back up again hot hopefully it will that's good all right we can get all this cleaned up here i don't need to bore you with all that clean the uh intake i don't think i have a new air filter uh but that's not going to stop me from cleaning all this up i'll take care of the spark arrester i'll probably go ahead and put a new spark plug in there because that one's uh now eight years old might not be so great and um, we'll see what goes from here see if we can't find out where the leak is coming from so i do want to show you how i test the tank vent very simple you have to take off the recoil starter and then you have to take off this these are t27s and this tank vent just pops right off and it as you can see flows right back into where the carb is so this might be the excess pressure was coming out of here and filling in maybe he turned it upside down i have no idea now i did clean off eight years of debris off of the top of this thing i'm going to hit this with a little brake parts cleaner to try to get that cleaned up i think i wonder if i can shoot through that way i'm going to spray just a little bit of air through there you can see it a little bit of that brake cleaner bubbling out there not real tough but want to make sure that's good and clear But I'm going to test this tank vent. Uh, I have a homemade pressure tester. I made this out of a brake bleeding kit. Uh, it does have vacuum and it has pressure on this side. And I'm going to show you a couple things you can do on this. First of all, I'm going to set this pressure gauge. We're going to test for a vacuum and see if this thing... You see I pump up about seven pounds of pressure and the tank vent is not or excuse me vacuum about seven pounds of vacuum and the tank vent is not letting anything come back through there pull that off and then on the other end i can put pressure through here i don't know if you can see the little pressure gauge there and again one pump And you can see it is, the vent is working. So it lets air in, but it doesn't let fuel out. Simple, pop this thing back in. Here's a little arrow to indicate, I guess, the direction of that. The grommet seems in good shape. And hopefully, this is not going to spill fuel everywhere. A little bit of cleanup, let this sit overnight and see what happens. So as it turns out, my friend Tom from down under at Vintage Engine Repairs, I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Uh, he is an uber two-stroke geek, more than I ever was. Uh, we were uh, chatting on WhatsApp and he suggested uh, that it still could be the tank vent because I didn't pressurize it beyond the point. And I was like, it's a great idea. Just keep pumping up pressure until it overpowers it. However, that didn't explain the fuel on the floor after I cleaned it up two hours cleaned all that up and it was still leaking fuel so one of the things he suggested that I do is to pull out the uh, fuel filter and I pumped it up to about eight pounds and it would not hold so that leads us to believe there's either a bad needle in seat or possibly an air leak around gaskets so three quick screws later pull the whole thing off remove the throttle cable, and then I can pressure test this. I put this in a little jar of gasoline and uh, pump it up to about eight pounds of pressure. And it was very slow, but it's slow leak and I could see bubbles coming out of the Venturi. No bubbles seem to be coming around from the gaskets. So probably more than likely a bad needle and seat. So I went ahead and bought a new tank vent not sure if uh, that had anything to do with it. Carb kit to rebuild this. It's been 20 years. This thing's been in great shape, so follow along. Okay, this is an actual uh, Walbro carburetor, and it is a, an HD28A. And um, the kit that for that is a K10, is a K10HD. And although 
uh, the needle probably matches some others. This thing's 20 years old. I decided to just go ahead and buy the complete kit and uh, replace everything in there. So, all right, this is a uh, number one JIS screwdriver. Remove the pump, the diaphragm side. And each of these screws does have a little locking washer on there. Don't lose that. But as you can see, this diaphragm, it's kind of wrinkled. So this is a good thing to be replacing this. Ooh, full of fuel. And in order to get the needle out, I am going to have to remove this gasket. And uh, it nicely came off in one piece. They often don't do that. Uh, just a tiny bit of gasket goo on there, which we can... Scrape off gently. I'm going to remove the the needle. And the lever arm. So this does have a tiny rubber tip on there. I don't know how soft that feels, but um, all these bits get worn out from fuel. Well, don't lose the spring. All right, so get into this kit here and see what we have. We have a pump, a new metering diaphragm, inlet, a couple of different types of gaskets that we will match up and make sure we get the right ones, and it does not come with a new spring, so we will have to reuse the old spring. All right, so I'm going to put this side back together. Make sure we get this gasket on correctly. So two holes right there. So the new lever arm appears to be a little bit beefier than the old one. And the new needle is the same. It has a light coating of something on the uh, rubber part, but we'll be replacing that. Are right, you going to place the old spring in that little recess right there? We're going to set the needle in its little fork. And in the new pin, there's a little dimple that sticks out that has to sit right in the middle of that spring. Put the pin hinge in and see if we can't set this guy in there without making too much of a mess. Let's try it this way. <laughs> Oops. I didn't quite get it in there, but I'll just use a pick to push that spring up under that little dimple. All right. And just double check to make sure everything is all in there. We're going to replace this screw that holds that hinge pin in. These are tiny, fiddly little bits. Sorry. That was to have a magnetized screwdriver. I'm going to tighten that down. Nothing really crazy here. Because this is going into aluminum body. Don't overdo it. Now, because we've put a new lever arm in there, we have to check the tension on here because if there's too much tension, it will keep it open. So Walbro makes a handy dandy checker and you have to check this without the gasket on and it'll say which side. So these are all the HD carburetors on this side right here. So we want to double check and make sure that the that the needle 
lever is just flush with the bottom of that. And it looks to me it is not touching. So if this was touching, you'd have to hold down this side and bend it down some, or perhaps bend it up if it was if it was well below the level of that. But to me, it I don't know if you can see this or not, but it looks to me that it is just kissing that, which I think is the perfect position for that. All right, next is the gasket that goes on here. Now, this gasket has these two alignment pins, and you can mess this up by putting this on the wrong way. As you can see, oops, sorry. If you try to put it on like this, you can get the alignment pins in there, but as you can see, the holes don't line up. So this has to go uh, this way. Same thing with the new metering diaphragm, those alignment pins. See, I can put that on the wrong way, and they don't line up. You'd be pinching your diaphragm at that point. I'm going to put that on that side, and all these holes now line up. Last thing, this is clean. Set that back in there. Make sure you haven't lost any of the little locking washers. Get them all started before I tighten them down. And there should be no tension on that. You shouldn't have to work hard to get the screw started. Again, not too tight, but we do want it to lock down. All right. Then on the other side, the pump side, like I said, there's no point in going to all this work and not going ahead and rebuilding the entire carb at this point. This screen, even though it looks clean, I mean, there's a few specks of something in there, but there's no reason not to just go ahead and replace this because we have the parts. We're already in there. Let's just go ahead and get that out. Oops. Now, even though that screen looked clear, didn't have a lot of debris in it, some really fine micro debris, set the new screen in there, try to put it in flush, and then, whoops, you can use the backside of a, like a quarter inch drill bit, or I'm using a quarter inch bolt right here. I'm just going to press this down evenly so that it goes, so it doesn't go in crooked. And you want to make sure you go down far enough. You don't want anything going past those holes right there. And you don't want to block that hole. So just make sure that's in there good. The pump itself is probably okay. But there's a good bit of debris in there. And you can see where the pump has been under pressure for a while, so we'll be replacing that. Hopefully this gasket comes off in one piece. They do. There's several types of gaskets here. And I'm pretty sure this is the rubberized gasket. Not either of the fiber gaskets. That would work. Again, two locating pins. Set that on there. And the new pump. And fit this on where the little well right there matches up with the well right there. There are locating pins. Before you really tighten that down, make sure it's on there flush. And tighten this guy down. Again, not too tight. Double check. 
going to test this one more time in our gasoline and pressure tester and make sure no bubbles are coming up anywhere. All right, there is a tiny leak. I don't know if you can see that or not. A little couple of bubbles coming up from that corner right there. I'm going to pull that back out. Yeah, I think we're good there. I don't see anything. All right, tighten that back down. Put my pressure gauge back up. Drop this in, give a little pump. It is not leaking at all. It's been sitting here right at seven pounds of pressure for, I don't know, a good three or four minutes. So I think we're good to go. I'm gonna try to replace this tank vent without taking the covers off again, if I can wiggle that guy off. I think it's coming, a little assistance there. There we go. All right. This is a uh, steel part number 4203-350-5801B. If you put that part number in a lot of search engines, they give you the wrong one for like the BR450, which is not good. It won't work. I just cleaned off all the grit off of the back of there. The old one does look like there's some debris in there. I don't know. Push that on tight. I don't think that's a problem. And let's see if we can get this guy to pop on there without too much trouble. Sorry, this is kind of fiddly. I know you can't see much. All right. It pops right into that grommet. Going to fit our fuel line. And throttle cable on the carb. Fuel line with its little clamp. I know you can't see that, sorry. And then fit the throttle. There's a round side, flat side. We'll put that round side right on there. Snag that guy. Pull it by the choke. Fit that guy on there. Oops. Line up these screws. Get those screws going in. And tighten all that down. Now, although this spark arrestor isn't too bad, I'm still going to show you how I clean that out. Clamp off. Pull that guy off. There we go. Ooh, look how clogged up that is. It's not completely clogged, but it's got a lot of debris on there. That is a lot of debris. And then I'm going to try to clean that out. Use one of these little dental brush thingies and try to drag out, ooh, drag out as much of that as I can. I'll show you how much is coming out. Look at that. That is a lot of debris. Now I could go out and easily buy another one of these, but the easiest way I've found is just with a propane burner. What we're gonna do is just burn all that off. Wow, look at all that. And all that's left is to just blow off the ash.
much better. Fit this little guy back in there. Uh, and put the clamp back on. Uh, last thing is the um, air filter and pre-filter. This is sold as a kit by Stins. Um, it includes the pre-filter, this guy right here, which is uh, Stins part number 102412. And it also includes the actual air filter itself, which is Stins part number 102414. The pre-filter just slides inside of the case like that. And then the air filter itself slides in that way. And it should be a good tight fit. Squeeze all that in there. Pop that in around the corners. Mm -mm. It's not taking a... Ah, so you can't get that thing to take a bite on the bottom there. There we go. Well, ah, the little screw keeper has come out of there. There we go. I got a bite that time. And on the top one. All right, let's give this a whirl. Uh, ignition on. Throttle closed, uh, choke. Not bad. Let it warm up a few minutes. So I ran this for a good five minutes or so, and I want to see if there's any fuel leaking onto the air filter. And if not, I think we have fixed the problem. Wow. Dry as a bone. I sat it back down on the cardboard for a couple of hours, and... Mm. No leaks. I think this little blower has a lot of life left in it, despite the high mileage. And thanks to my friend Tom, who pushed me in the right direction to keep looking further. With the right diagnostic tools, it's pretty easy to figure out exactly where the problem is. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them, like I did. I made a homemade one, but I'll add some links in the description for some others that you can buy that are really helpful when you're trying to diagnose problems on two-stroke equipment. And if you want to see how I made that little pressure tester and vacuum tester with parts I had laying around, watch this video right here. Blow happy. Oops, I got on upside down. Sorry about that. Air intake on the bottom, not on the top. 